right, Dan, real questions right out of the gate. When is the last time you played in the rain? Wow. <laughs> Surprise question. Played <laughs> what? Played what? I, I, I Anything. Think... It looked fun, didn't it? Like, uh, I, didn't, I didn't hate the elements. I thought it looked, they made it look fun. They made it look fun. No doubt about it. I know that in my high school, early college days, we had at least one turkey bowl on Thanksgiving morning and in, in, in the snow. It wasn't quite the rain, but it had a similar slip and slide feel to it. I know I've played golf in driving rainstorms as recently as July at Harbortown in Hilton Head. And we played the last three holes in a, in a rainstorm that was very similar to what we saw on Sunday. That wasn't as fun. Uh, but look, the Bears had some fun and they got out of there at 1-0, Dion, which none of us were expecting. None of us were expecting. He's Dan Reeder from the Chicago Tribune. I'm Dan Miller from ABC7. Yeah, the Bears, the surprising 1-0 team. They were the only ones that seemed like they had any confidence that they could make this happen. Roquan in the huddle before the game saying, we're, no one's giving us a chance and we're going with it. And that was a narrative they did not want to play to at the end of training camp and heading into the season. They did not want to say that nobody's giving us a chance. Clearly that's playing in the locker room and it worked. I was most impressed though, Dan, with the the mental a toughness of Justin coming out of that first half where the social media universe basically <laughs> rode off the bears that fast. And then we rode the roller coaster back into the second half and, and he didn't right. Like he stayed so even keel and he was able to not only lead the offense, but lead the team and set the example and, and kind of take leadership. And that's something we've been waiting to see. So there's two different storylines packed within that little nugget there because the first storyline is that the offense was abysmal in the first half, right? Yeah. Justin had a passer rating of 2.8. They didn't complete a pass beyond the line of scrimmage until the second play of the third quarter. In the modern day NFL, rainstorm or no rainstorm, that's not going to get it done. It was a mess. They were scoreless. The only chance they had to score in the first half was negated when their punter brought a towel out of the field to drive a puddle <laughs> at the hole. Nice. And they, they backed themselves out of field goal range and went to halftime with zero points and no momentum. That's a problem, right? And that's a problem that's got to get fixed really quickly because I think the Bears were very lucky that their defense played as well as it did to keep them in that game and prevent it from becoming a chase game early that allowed them to have that extra exhale at halftime and be able to come out and, and be able to just find one play. Now, the second part of that is what you mentioned. Justin's ability to stay steady emotionally mm -hmm. is important, right? It's one of those prerequisites for a quarterback that needs to be there. And we know from years and years of experience in this city that Mitch Trubisky wasn't often able to overcome a rough first half. Jay Cutler wasn't able to often overcome a rough first half. It would just spiral and spiral and spiral, and you never got that bounce back. Now, listen, the Bears' bounce back on Sunday was not as significant as the end result makes it feel, right? They get a 51-yard touchdown play on a broken play and a busted coverage by the 49ers. They get another touchdown because they had a 21-yard field provided by the defense, and they get a third touchdown on a play where the, the, the 49ers struggled to, to find men in coverage, which is a good play design. But the Bears have to realize how sharp they're going to need to be offensively to be that competitive every single week because you're not going to be scoreless in, in first halves of games and still keep yourself alive. How much of Justin's mental toughness in that moment do you think is a credit to a guy like Luke Getze in his ear? Because Luke is has worked with a quarterback who has never really got felt out of it, right? Who takes the field thinking we're always in it until the clock's over. And yeah. I'm just I feel like there is an influence there that's going on that we're going to see on the field as the season progresses. Well, I would say a lot of this is in Justin's DNA, right? We've gotten to know him a little bit over the, the 16, 17 months since he's joined the Bears. And you just feel that from him on an everyday basis, that he is just very naturally steady. Sometimes we want him to be more excited because it's a little boring when he's this right. steady inside a press conference. Sometimes we want him to, uh, to to give us a little more. But 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 there is something within him that caters to just being very confident. And Justin's very confident in himself because of the preparation he puts in, right? And, and he just understands that, hey, you can, you can push a, a bad play, a bad series, a bad half aside, yeah. And come back and make plays because you've made plays before in your life, right? Like you've made big plays in big moments in big games before. And so what's the difference now? Matt Eberflus has talked this week about the cycle of the snap. I think this is going to be one of those catchphrases that we're going to get sick of like in a year or two from now. But right now it's Matt's message to his players that every play is its own entity. And no matter what came before and what's to come after, you have to have that etch-a-sketch and shake that thing clear. And this next play is your chance to do something with it. Justin did a wonderful job of that on Sunday of being able to stay in that moment. And, and again, the 49ers provided some gifts, right? There's yeah. a face mask penalty. There's a dropped interception. Both of those things occurred on the series preceding the 51-yard touchdown pass to Dante Pettis. And so it's a credit to the Bears 
for taking some of the gifts they got from the 49ers and cashing them into the fullest extent because that's what allows you to win football games. And the other part about Justin, in addition to the steadiness, when you have athleticism to get outside the pocket and use speed to buy time, throw back across the field and, and, and make a play like that, that's something the Bears, I think, are, are banking on seeing at least once a week, right? It may not always be a 51-yard touchdown, but at least once a week, you need to have something that goes way wrong and you turn it into way right, right? And that is something that he has in his skill set. We're going to need to see more of going forward. I think Sunday also showed me just how much Matt Eberflus has the attention of the room and the things that he's saying they're seeing on film that it works. I mean, you mentioned wearing down the 49ers. This, this is a, a Bears team that's going to go hard. The effort is always going to be there. Even already this week, Matt LaFleur said the same thing to the Green Bay media. He's like, you watch it on film. They, the effort is there. They are always going to go, always going to go hard. And that's directly a reflection of Matt Eberflus. Now, the difference between Eberflus and what we heard from Fields already this week is that Matt doesn't want to talk at all about this rivalry or make it bigger than it is. And Justin, I think, recognizes the moment. He's going into Green Bay as the 1-0 and team. No, uh, national television, they, they understand what stage they're on. Whether or not that gives them a chance, I don't know. But I think that there's a level of confidence that comes with what they pulled off in week one that we haven't seen with this group that we're going to now get to see on Sunday night. And, oh, checks the weather. It is supposed to rain. So maybe that is in their favor, right? Maybe they'll just have, you know, 14 uh, rain games this year and, and, and <laughs> we'll open up roofs wherever they need to play with a roof and we'll pour some water in through those just to, to make them more comfortable, right? But we'll see. Obviously, it's a good thing to not only have the win in week one, but they have come through a preseason where you won every single game and you built some of that confidence and that assuredness that the work you're putting in translates into results. And there was no bigger play for me in that game that represented what Matty Berfus is asking for than Jalen Johnson's strip of Debo Samuel on the first drive that the 49ers had. The 49ers got the Bears to go three and out on their first series, and they're in complete control on offense, moving down the field, going in for a, a touchdown that could be a tone-setting touchdown to start the game. Jalen is stuck on a block. He can't make the tackle on Debo Samuel. But something in his head triggers and said, what have we been working on for yeah. six weeks? What have we been working on for the three months before that? When in doubt, make a play on the football, reaches out that left arm, punches that football free, and all of a sudden the Bears have new life, right? And those are the types of plays that are going to show up over and over again for this team that is going to allow them to be feisty and competitive and upset-minded because, as we know, they're going to be underdogs in a lot of different areas as we go through the season. I'll give you a number, though. The Bears have not won a primetime game against the Packers since Thanksgiving night of 2015. Yeah. Five of those six losses – have been at Lambeau Field by an average margin of 14 points. So we know what this stage has been for Bears teams past. We also know that this is a whole new roster and a whole new coaching staff and a whole new group of people that don't have the baggage of those losses. It's just a, a little warning that, that Aaron Rodgers certainly likes this stage, certainly likes this rivalry, certainly doesn't like the feeling of a 16-point loss that they had in week one and is certainly going to be motivated to, uh, to, to come out and try to keep that trend going. I feel like I remember him saying something about owning the Bears. I don't know. Maybe in passing, we might have caught that. Not this sure. does mean something to Aaron Rodgers. It does. He said this week as well, when I got here, our record was not against the Bears. We were trailing in that series, and now we're up by five or something, or eight or whatever it is. And he's like, that matters to me. That matters to me. This this gets him going. And for them to come out of the loss that they did, it you know he's going to come in ready to like hit the ground running. The issue is that the Packers are not the same Packers team. Like he's still adjusting to young wide receivers, new wide receivers, not named Devontae Adams that he's yeah. trying to make find a rhythm with. And and they've had their ups and downs right through training camp where he's criticized the rookies and then came back and decided to praise them. And and you know his body language on Sunday, he was so frustrated and. He's if, if the Bears are going to catch the Packers, this would be the week to do it when they're still trying to figure stuff out. Yeah, they are still trying to figure things out. And I think that there is a, a lot made and justifiably so of Devontae Adams' exit. And Devontae obviously showed on Sunday that, that he's going to find new life in Las Vegas, maybe quicker than Aaron's going to find new life with this new receiving core in Green Bay. But it's more than just Devontae Adams' absence. Nathaniel Hackett is now coaching yeah. the Denver Broncos. Luke Getze is now the coordinator here in Chicago. And so, so Aaron's got a lot of new pieces around him. He's got an offensive line that's in flux right now with Bakhtiari and Jenkins trying to, to, to make their way back from knee injuries. And so it's not just Devontae's absence that has this offense disjointed. And so this is well timed for the Bears to be able to go up there with a defense that has, has shown a level of grit and a level of tenacity that is going to be beneficial in a game like this. And maybe you do catch them feeling a little less confident than you're used to seeing the Packers feel. And, and, and Rodgers has got to find who his go-to guy is in big moments, right? <laughs> they, they talked for three days 
about opening the season opener with a bomb play to Christian Watson, and they open it with a perfect bomb play to Christian Watson, and he drops the ball. Drops the ball well, right. now that makes you a little bit more hesitant to, 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 to take those home run swings to a rookie who, who uh, failed in his first opportunity to make that big play. And so, so yeah. all those little psychological advantages uh, are starting to tilt a little bit more towards Chicago than we're used to seeing that needles usually fully <laughs> on the green Bay side of things. So let's see how, how competitive they can stay and, and what they can do to, to, to hang around in games. I think really the formula for this bears team, hang around, hang around, hang around, yes. then find that moment somewhere in the second half to make the play that swings the whole thing. As Eberflu said, there's going to be a handful of like six, seven plays that actually define what's going to happen in the game. The bears just need to be ready for whatever direction that goes. And I love that the head coach is acting like it's no big deal, nonchalant that they have Luke Getze in the room. Please tell me, Dan, that they are picking his brain relentlessly, especially the defense, to know how to slow down Aaron Rodgers. Well, sure. I mean, and Luke's going to be as familiar with Aaron as anybody in terms of knowing some of the things that make him uncomfortable, right? And you want to share all those things with your boss and say, hey, look, these are things that caused him problems and these are things that frustrate him. And here's how we can, you know, create pressure in opportune moments that that maybe gives us a chance to get a takeaway. The Bears don't typically get takeaways from Aaron Rodgers. Right. The Vikings got two on Sunday and they made him make a couple bad decisions that were uncharacteristic. And so you need to have at least one of those moments on Sunday if you're going to pull off an upset, particularly with an offense. I go back to this, you know, it's it's really easy to feel intoxicated by that 1-0 start and the end result of that game. The Bears offense put up fewer yards than any other team in the NFL in week one, right? This is the same old story where it's like, my God, like you are 90 plus yards short of 300 for the game. And I get it. It was raining. It was a monsoon. There were all sorts of things going wrong, but the 49ers had 330 plus yards. And so you've yeah. got to find offensive rhythm somewhere where you're not relying on broken plays to get you back in a football game. Right. And so uh, that's, that's going to be a challenge here because as we know, you know, Aaron can, can put you in a hole uh, at, at times where now, now your entire game plan has to change because you're playing catch up. I don't want to tell the Bears what to do, maybe in the secret of the night and the day on Sunday, but maybe like soak the field, do something. Although, I mean, that rain chance is is maybe in their favor. I don't know, Dan. I get so excited. You know me. I like drink the Kool-Aid so fast that I'm like, yeah, they're going to be 2-0. Let's be realistic about this. But, but I would like to see them keep it close and, and keep it interesting. And I think I think that they will. I think that I think it'll be more competitive than than maybe we're used to seeing at times for all the reasons that we just talked about. Aaron Rodgers has started a season 0-1 four times before. He's never started a season 0-2. <laughs> He's bounced back really quickly. Last year, this is notable. They went and lost a, an opener in a neutral site game against the Saints. They lost 38-3. Yeah. to They came back the next week in prime time against a division opponent at home, and they scored five touchdowns on their first six possessions, right? And they, they put the Lions down pretty quickly. And so you always have to be ready for the, the competitive vitriol that Aaron Rodgers can fuel uh, into a, a rebound week, right? And, yeah. and, and so the Bears have to be ready for that. I think they will be. I think Matt has shown that he, he keeps his guys focused. And I think one of the reasons that he is minimizing the stakes of the rivalry is because he realizes he's got a young roster and that for yeah. these guys to, to have a chance in this game, they've got to be very, very tunnel visioned. And it, I think that's a tactical move by a coach who understands the, the makeup of his roster right now and his ability to, to tap into the things within them that he needs to tap into. So let's see how it, how it plays out. Look, it's an exciting week. If the bears can win this game and pull off upset number two, they get a two game cushion over the Packers in the NFC North. Matt, Eberflus and his boss, Ryan Poles, promised back in January that they were going to take the North and never give it back. Are they going to take it for good on, on Sunday night? Let's see, Dion. If they go 2-0, Dan, I'm buying you a slip and slide. How All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. And, and I'll do a video uh, out in my front yard. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll slip inside if they go 2-0. I guess I've made this promise there, now. There this we is, go. This Deal. is a bad I promise to it. make. <laughs> <laughs> He's Dan. I'm Dion. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.